Newport News in Review starts right now. and welcome to this edition of Newport News in Review for the month of December 2009. Well, they say there's no place like home for the holidays, and it's certainly true, especially if you've been a part of all the excitement that's been going on right here in this great city. From miles and miles of twinkling lights to spectacular displays of light, it's all here. And although the holidays seem to come faster and faster every year, there's no need to worry, because the most wonderful time of year is here. And this month, we're unwrapping quite a sight to see with just one of the best places to celebrate the spirit of the season as we bring the show to you from the very festive city center at Oyster Point. Oh, you better watch out, you better not cry. Open your eyes to a place that is bright and beautiful as this well-known business retail center has been transformed into a winter wonderland all its own, giving citizens and visitors alike the perfect place to experience the magic of the holidays all month long. Oh, as the City of Newport News, the Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism and other Newport News Town Center partners have been working together to make this open air gathering place and this exciting time of year an annual holiday tradition for the young and the young at heart. And of course, that had a lot to do with the very first Holly Dazzle celebration back in 2004, which at the time was held around only half of the City Center's trademark five acre fountain due to the construction of the Marriott Hotel and Conference Center and other retail spaces. But that didn't stop a curious crowd of a few thousand from coming out to experience a jaw-dropping, eye-opening, one-of-a-kind lights and fireworks spectacular that had never been seen before in Hampton Roads. And that would ultimately create the perfect event from which to build on year after year. And build they did, as over the next few years, City Center has come to include many festive decorations, one of the tallest LED lighted Christmas trees in the state of Virginia, the perfect place for kids of all ages to tell good old St. Nick himself their hopes and dreams, Plenty of unique places to shop for the perfect gifts, restaurants to warm the heart and the belly, and a Holly Dazzle event that has come to create a New Year's Eve Times Square-like atmosphere, where more than 20,000 people have come together to ring in the holiday season year after year, offering everything under the light of the moon to see and do, and a show that offers a 360 degree view around the fountain of what has become the premier holiday lights and fireworks show on the East Coast. But no matter where you go and what you do, the city center at Oyster Point is the perfect place to create lasting holiday memories and traditions year after year. We are proud to feature the beautiful city center at Oyster Point, especially at night, so that you can see for yourself the wonderful holiday atmosphere that is here. And we encourage you to experience all the events and activities that are always going on no matter what time of the year. Well, December has been another busy month, so let's take a look at what's been going on right here in the city of Newport News. Shop until you drop, not for you, but for others, as the season of giving becomes more important than ever, as the Fraternal Order of Police and the Newport News Police Department do their part with a day of shopping with some pretty excited children as they look to make the season a whole lot brighter for those less fortunate this holiday season. It's a very special time for a very special man as Mayor Joe Frank is honored with an award that fewer than 2,000 men receive and is a direct result of his childhood commitment to an organization that teaches early on about being prepared. And it's an economic engine for the city of Newport News and things just got a whole lot greener as the very successful seafood industrial park in the southeast community joins in on an innovative program that turns old fishing equipment into renewable energy and ultimately helps us all as we strive to be more environmentally green. Deck the halls, trim the tree, do whatever you can to be green. No, not the color green, but environmentally green. As the city of Newport News recently became the latest community on the East Coast and the first in the state of Virginia to participate in an innovative partnership that provides a cost-free solution for fishermen and seafood businesses to properly dispose of old fishing gear that is then turned into renewable energy. And what better place to kick this unique program off than the very successful Seafood Industrial Park in the southeast community of Newport News. This is a key program. You know, I've been thinking about it. It's really exciting that somebody came up with this idea when the harbor master first dropped the material off and I read it, I couldn't believe it. I thought, well, this is what we always dreamed of. 
finally somebody thought up something that we really need. Fishing for energy is, you know, an outlet for, for commercial fishing equipment, basically to get rid of derelict equipment that may be offshore still, what they call ghost fishing, catching, you know, fishing trapped in pieces of net that, uh, that get left hanging over there. It was, you know, started after uh, a program in Hawaii where they found it very difficult once they had the stuff, you know, on islands to get rid of it. So it was brought here and started by the uh, National uh, Fish and Wildlife Association, the NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, and then a, a steel company and an energy company. And they found that, that they could go to big commercial hubs like Newport News, and they started it up north in New Bedford, uh, Point Judith, and found that the commercial fishermen were very receptive to, to doing it and they can recycle the combustible material for energy, they can recycle the steel to make new products. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. And um, so Newport News was chosen because, once again, it has you know, become one of the major hubs on the East Coast. And um, we have probably over 100 boats, not, not all stationed here, but over 100 boats in a year's time that will come in and unload their catch here. So. You take a hundred of the bigger scallop boats that we have here, and the amount of stuff that they can either catch or create, then that's a, that's a fair amount of stuff to, you know, to try to put to good use. That's what it's all about, is to, uh, to get trash out of the water, trash out of landfills, and actually do something um, with it, recyclable. I've been involved in waterfront activity down here, you know, in this area for 28 years now. And, uh, I think the Fishing for Energy program is one of the best things that we've seen come around for a while. You know, I mean, there's, like I said, it's a, a tremendous need to, to be able to cut some of these dredges up, to get rid of some of this fish gear. I mean, there's no value in it anymore and we have to do something with it. And uh, that's why these places look like this. We pile this gear up because we really don't know how to, how to dispose of it. You don't want to take it in the ocean and throw it on the bottom that we fish ourselves. And, uh, so to be good stewards, we just let it sit here and look at it, but then it becomes an eyesore, and it really, you know, I think probably degrades the industrial harbor and what this place should look like and uh, for, the, for the time that it is, you know. I mean, it's getting ready to be 2010, and I think we need to clean things up. You know, I've had a lot of enthusiasm. Um, hopefully we're going to, you know, fill it up so much that we're going to have stuff left over. So we're, we're anticipating after this initial clean out to get, you know, everything out that they have stored, they have stored on their boats or on their land or stuff they've caught in the last, you know, since the program was announced in uh, late summer. Then we're, um, you know, planning on having the container left here and cleaned out every quarter and maybe rotating it from business to business so that, you know, each one, uh, you know, has, has an equally easy time of accessing it. Well, this, this environmental effort now kind of rounds out everything that we're doing here. Um, you know, we're bringing in the seafood, we're packing it out, we're shipping it off, and now we're not creating a lot of trash with it. We're recycling to reuse again so that this whole process can keep going and providing seafood. It's a foundation like no other and one that has helped millions and millions of young boys across the country gain the necessary skills in life to succeed, become leaders, and more importantly, be prepared for no matter what the situation. So you're probably wondering, how do I know? Well, not only am I a product of the Boy Scouts of America and an Eagle Scout, but so too is your mayor. And Joe Frank was recently honored with a very special award that only a few thousand have received. And this great event took place at the Marriott Hotel and Conference Center right here at the City Center at Oyster Point. I want to thank you for joining us today with this very special presentation. The Eagle Scout Award is the highest rank attainable in the Boy Scouting program of the Boy Scouts of America. Since its introduction in 1911, the Eagle Scout rank has been earned by 2% of those ever enrolled in scouting. The award includes an extensive service project where the scout plans and organizes leads and manages the actual Eagle Award. The pen includes a silver eagle. Our guests of honor this morning uh, joined Troop 5 at the age of 11. Now, Joe moved through the ranks quite rapidly. He served in numerous leadership positions and was awarded his Eagle Scout rank in 1956. 
the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award was first introduced in 1969 and was awarded by the National Eagle Scout Association. The Distinguished Eagle Scout Award consists of a gold eagle suspended from a red, white, and blue ribbon that's worn around the neck of the recipient. This Distinguished Early Scout Award is the only Distinguished Service recognition that depends on one's association with scouting as a youth, and the recipient must have obtained the Eagle Scout rank at least a minimum of 25 years before his nomination. And over those years, he must have rendered outstanding service to others. He must have gained status of fame, eminence in their life work, and must have shared their talents with the community on a voluntary basis. At this time, we're going to formally present the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award to our mayor, our friend, my very, very good friend, Mr. Joe Frank. Scouting has been a great experience in my life. I learned about things that, as a young man, I would have never otherwise experienced. I had uh, opportunities and challenges that uh, were significant in my life in those days. But the principles that scouting taught um, have abided with me all of my life. And I've been grateful for the experience. I, I'm overwhelmed by this award. Um, if you look at the um, names on the list that uh, have also been presented with this award, it's pretty clear they lost their way when they got to me, but uh, <laughs> it, it is a distinguished group of people who clearly have provided um, meaningful, meaningful uh, contributions to this nation. And, um, but I, I'm just terribly appreciative of the support I've had over the years from the people of this community. Thank all of you so very much. And to the council, thank you for recognizing me in this way. Um, I was truly not believing that I got this thing or that I'm deserving of it, but you're very gracious and very kind to do it. And I'm deeply grateful. Thank you very much. It's the season of giving, a time to look past your own personal needs so that you can give back to those less fortunate. Well, that's exactly what's been going on for many years now, and this year at the Walmart on Jefferson Avenue, with the return of a very special event that warms the heart, makes the season bright, and definitely puts the holiday season completely into perspective. I'm gonna look first. So you, you only have $100 to spend. Pick, pick, pick what you want, but just, just yeah, let me know what you're gonna get. Look though. at this. Well, we're doing uh, Shop with the Cop, which the Fraternal Order of Police does every year. Um, lodge number 25 is the lodge that we represent here in Newport News. And the whole purpose of this is to try to give some of the underprivileged children or the children that have been victims of crime a uh, opportunity to come out and get some stuff for themselves so that they can enjoy their Christmas. you see anything? You know what you want when you see it. What we do is about the 1st of October or so, I'll send out applications and I ask all the uh, participants to fill the applications out and the reasons why they believe the children should be selected. We average about 120 to 150 applicants and then we can choose 50 of those. Pay them right to you. <laughs> okay, once we've received the application, we'll pick a date that we'll sit down and have everybody go through them and they go through them and they make the selections. Then I'll send invitations out with each child's name on it with the raised seal of the uh, lodge so that they you know, recognize it as authentic. Do it again. <laughs> hey, here you go. Look at that one. They got that one too. Oh, look at that one. Yes. It gets us at their level, one on one with the kids. Oh, that looks. I just. I oh, want there's this. one. You want that one? <laughs> Some of these kids do not get a lot for Christmas as it is. So being able to help them uh, pick out whatever they want, it just makes you feel good inside. Press the button. Good job. It also provides a uh, more of a positive experience. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the times when they see us, it's you know on a traffic stop or some kind of a situation where um, 
we end up looking kind of like the bad guys, and we like to be able to, to show them that there is another side to that. There is a heart inside the badge. So um, for the families, I think it makes a big difference because it gives them not only a positive uh, influence and an opportunity to see what the police officers really do. Can you even touch? Yay! Yay! Oh, Marvin Pink Holiday? <laughs> I, get, I got four dogs for me. I love dogs. I remember the first year I did it, I walked around with a little fella that, you know, he, oh, my sister would love this, my brother, would, oh, he'll like this, this, I want to get this for my mom. And by the time we were done, he only had about $10 left and hadn't bought himself a thing. And, uh, you know, when you see that, it hooks you. That's, that's what tells you I want to do this every year because it gives you the opportunity to come in here and, and deal with some of these kids and see just you know, just how innocent some of them really are. Okay, I got all what I need and all what I want. What? Whoa. 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 I really, really like shopping with the cops because it was really fun because they got to get stuff for me and my baby sister. For her to be able to have gifts underneath the tree is wonderful. It's really wonderful and I really appreciate that there are programs like this to help out children because some programs you're not able to get them into. So it's really nice that they have something like this for the children to enjoy themselves and I think the cops even have fun too. I want to say not only thank you to Walmart um, for providing us the opportunity to utilize the store but I also want to say thanks to all those members of the community and even though it's been a very difficult year for many people um, they still came through for us. What? And it gave us exactly what we needed to make this program work. Yeah, good buddy. You be good. Winter is officially here, and Jack Frost will soon be nipping at your nose and all places in between. But there's no need to worry, because a brand new event recently blew into town, bringing with it plenty of warmth, a whole lot of fun, and the beginning of an annual holiday tradition, as the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center in the southeast community of Newport News opened their doors to celebrate the spirit of the season with a little holiday frost. This is the first annual holiday frost here at the Down and Gross Cultural Arts Center. You're whisking into winter wonderland and you immediately hear the melodious voices of the legacy jazz ensemble from Heritage High School. They are singing in the foyer of the building. They had four performances tonight, but it was important for them to come and participate in this community event here at the Cultural Arts Center. Okay, we're ready, you guys. Next group. Let's do it. Wait, slow down. Slow down, no running. All of the children are escorted up to the third floor for arts and crafts, for games. They can make snowflakes. They get to make reindeer, they can make snowmen, some of them can just color a picture, and some of them can make holiday ornaments upstairs. Can you get snowmen is that? On a small farm, there lived a farmer. He only had a few animals. Pearl Bailey Library is having story time. There are 27 youth volunteers who have agreed to read stories to the children. So for those children who want to hear holiday stories and get involved and learn about Twas the Night Before Christmas, they can have some downtime in the Anderson Johnson Gallery amongst all the beautiful trees. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. What's your name? Yes, Santa is giving each of the community youth a gift bag that has arts and crafts that they can do over the holidays, and that's a special gift from the Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center. They will each get uh, colored pencils, they will get a colored notebook, some of them will get construction paper, glue, scissors, and it's just something so they can do something artistic during their time off from school. And one for you. Welcome to Candyland. We make it into the big grand finale, and it is a real life Candyland. Um, it is amazing. You walk into the banquet room and you immediately come to the Candyland strips, all of the colors, all of the candy, all of the characters. It is so exciting. The kids kind of got a preview when they walked into the building and they were screaming and cheering and they want Candyland, but that's the finale, so that's saved for last. You name it, it's there. Candy, necklaces, color sheets, crayons, colored pencils, all for the kids to enjoy. 
It's something really to be proud of. It warms my heart. I am so excited. As I was greeting the children coming in, I was, they were hugging me and they were so excited and they were so thankful. So I am really excited to be able to bring this to the community. Thank you so much for coming to Holiday Frost. This is the last part of the event. We're gonna light up the Christmas wreaths that are on the back side of the building. And all throughout the season, you can come to Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center and see the building lit up on the outside and on the inside. Did you think it looked nice? Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe I should get y'all to cheer a little bit more so they'll light up the wreaths. People to see, places to go, and plenty of annual holiday traditions to uphold. The holiday season is indeed a very special time of the year, especially for children. And you would simply be amazed what happens when you mix in a few stories, a song or two, and the chance to create some festive decorations for a very special tree. As we take you inside the Grissom Library in the Denby section of Newport News for an event that has been growing and creating plenty of cheer for the last 12 years. We're here today doing the Grissom Christmas tree tree trim. We've been doing the tree trim for 12 years. The children come to the story time. We read stories about Christmas. It was Christmas Eve, and baby Al had been out in the snowy woods playing with his sled. For many of our children, coming to story times is the first opportunity they have to be in that kind of a situation with other children and hear wonderful children's literature for the very first time. Um, it also reinforces early literacy skills that are so important to children in their school. Um, experience so it's it's a wonderful way to share wonderful children's literature with children and we're all going to be helping you make your crafts today we're making a beautiful ornament out of foam and it has special things that you can glue on special pens that you can write with we have five stations that the children are making ornaments um, one station was clear balls that they could stuff with different kinds of decorative material we have uh, bead stations they made stars they made candy canes they made necklaces, they made bracelets. Then we had Christmas cards that they could decorate for mom or dad to put on the Grissom tree to give to their favorite teacher that they used stamps and stickers to decorate. It started off very small and it started 12 years ago um, and the Christmas season and basically it was a way to get the tree decorated. We involved the children in order to have ornaments to put on the Grissom tree. It became bigger and better every year. We have children who love participating and they remember from year to year that we do this and look forward to the Grissom tree trim. We put the tree up bare with a sign that says, come and help decorate me, I'm bare, I need some ornaments. And the children see that and want to come and help decorate the tree. Today some people are studying and reading, so let's use our library boards as okay. We walk into the Grissom um, main library to the bare Christmas tree and the children take ornaments from the trays and decorate the tree. They're so excited to be able to actually put an ornament on the tree. These are all very kid-friendly ornaments that they've created themselves so they can actually put it on the tree and look back and see the wonderful things that they've made. Now we're in the year 2010 and if you didn't get a chance to join us for the Grissom Tree Trim, we have wonderful things going on at the library all year long. Here, there, and everywhere. This time of year is indeed a very busy time of the year for the jolly old man himself, with a list miles and miles long that he checks not only once but twice, and plenty of places to stop to listen to the hopes and dreams of children everywhere. Ho, 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 ho. Well, this year was indeed no different, as Santa Claus dropped in for a very special visit right here at the city center at Oyster Point. Hi, who do we have here? My name's Puddles. Are you here to see Santa? Well, he's right through this way, come on in. Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. Hi, big guy, how you doing? Hey, wait a minute. You gotta give me five first. All right, give me five more. Ah, ho, 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 ho. We've been doing this for four years. When we were in the Marriott, we used the Marriott lobby, their Christmas tree. We put Santa's throne and those um, gift packages and we had to build it every morning and tear it down every afternoon. And I think maybe we saw maybe 100 families through the course of four weeks. Then we moved to another site and built the Santa space, and then we moved here where we had the opportunity to build the workshop and the theater and Santa stage and um, increase fivefold the number of people that can come. Plus, word of mouth has spread that this is a really fun place to be over the holidays. And last is this no small box light up. Well, it starts with Holly Dazzling, which the city sponsors where we light the tree and, 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 and set up the fireworks, which is huge. 
and, and really brings the community together here. And then after that, this is another way for folks to get together and meet their neighbors while they're waiting in line. It gives the, the, the folks around here a chance to avoid the mall, for one thing, and the, the traffic. Come here to City Center with its beautiful setting, and the lake and the tree, and have an opportunity to participate in, in, in free events with the family, which is a hard thing to find. And uh, the Santa pictures are, are very inexpensive. I, I can tell you that they're much less than they are at the mall. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's great to be back here at the city center. We've had wonderful times here already. We've had wonderful times in the past. And I look forward to returning to the city center again, year after year. Well, the look in the eyes, you know, we can tell the anticipation and it seemed like the warmth in the heart. And the uh, majority of them just come right to center, which I really enjoy my boys and girls. And uh, I just hope this time of year that all of us have a most prosperous and wonderful Christmas and holiday. <laughs> so how do you know when you have a good thing going? Well, it takes the perfect place, a pretty big event, and a big crowd that continues to come back for more year after year. Well, if that is any indication, the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism knows exactly what they're doing as the highly anticipated Holly Dazzle event returned to the city center at Oyster Point, bringing with it more than 22,000 people and plenty of events and activities to spread some Christmas cheer. Oh, it's a happy season of all There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for roasting. has evolved. It started out with some activities on a part of the, the facility here and now we're totally in the round all the way around the fountain. The fireworks can be viewed all the way around and we have activities in every corner of city center. Santa Claus is coming. We have items for children to make, we have free giveaways, we have entertainment from stilt walkers and jugglers to children's groups from Newport News Public Schools. We have a lot of uh, community groups, we even have some volunteer entertainers. So there's a whole lot, uh, anything to tickle your fancy. We also have here at City Center restaurants doing specials and we have the uh, retail stores giving discounts, having extra long hours and lots of things. You can go indoors and outdoors for activities. So it's, there's something for everybody here at City Center. Every year it's gotten bigger and better. Every year they come up with new things to do. It's always a nice thing to do with families and friends. Everybody loves to get together. You can see if you um, stand here long enough, you can pass the whole city. So it's wonderful with all the free stuff to bring your kids and enjoy everything. They have a lot of vendors that come out. Carry sauces. People come out, everybody's nice. And there's a lot of events that happen just in this particular area anyway. They do the Christmas thing and they Thanksgiving. It's always something going on, always. It's like New Year's Eve, the, the ball dropping and everybody's uh, here having uh, a moment of cheer and fun. It's great. Newport News is a great city. I had to come by and check it out. Good job! The real uh, show of the day or of the year is the fireworks show. It's like something you never see. It's not a typical aerial fireworks show. It's all choreographed to music. They're close proximity fireworks and it is dead on with the music. It's very exciting. It, it's unlike anything you would see any place around. It is the best fireworks display ever. We look forward to this more than we do 4th of July. Well, that's about all the time we have for you this month. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Newport News in Review as we've helped to celebrate the holiday season at night at the very festive City Center at Oyster Point. 
And as always, on behalf of everyone here at Newport News TV, whether you're watching this on TV or online at nngov.com, Facebook, or YouTube, thanks for watching. And we'll see you here real soon for the January 2010 edition of Newport News in Review, right here on Newport News Television.